Hi everyone. As you will be aware, the government are holding two referendums on the 8th of March 2024. They are referring to the first as the family referendum and the second as the care referendum. In this short video, we will discuss the care referendum. The explanatory memorandum to the bill states that the purpose of the bill is to propose to delete the current wording of Article 41.2 and insert a new Article 42b into the Constitution that recognises family care. Roderick O'Gorman TD, the Minister proposing these changes, has said that the present wording of Article 41.2 seeks to contain women in a very singular role, a role that's completely divorced from the reality of women's lives, women's careers across the state today. On the screen you can see the current wording of the Constitution in black and the proposed changes that the government wish to make in red. In short, the purpose of the proposed amendment is to remove the special protection that mothers enjoy under the Constitution, whereby the state guarantees to endeavour to ensure that mothers are not forced into the labour market due to economic necessity, and to replace this with a gender-neutral requirement upon the state to strive to support care between family members. In this video, we are going to discuss the reasons why the government say the constitution needs to be amended and examine whether these reasons hold up to scrutiny. 1. The government state the constitution needs to be amended to remove the archaic and sexist reference to a woman's life, place and duties in the home. So the claim is that the constitution states that a woman's place is in the home and that this statement is both outdated and sexist. This statement is not correct. Firstly, as regards the Constitution stating that a woman's place is in the home, former Supreme Court Judge Brian Walsh has stated, Article 41 has attracted the wrath of some critics who claim to see it as a statement to the effect that a woman's place is in the home. This is not a new claim. However, such a claim completely misreads the Constitution. It is rather like a conditioned reflex to any sentence in which both the words woman and home appear. In the article, the state acknowledges that by her life within the home, woman gives the state the support without which the common good cannot be achieved. That is a statement of fact. It is possible that it may not be acceptable to everybody as a correct statement of fact. Yet, so far, nobody has yet publicly challenged it as such. Article 41 goes on to say that the state should therefore endeavour to ensure that mothers should not be obliged by economic necessity to engage in labour to the neglect of their duties in the home. Astonishingly, this protective guarantee has never been invoked in any litigation. Also, in 2001, former Supreme Court Judge and Chief Justice of Ireland, Susan Jane Denham stated, Article 41.2 does not assign women to a domestic role. Article 41.2 recognises the significant role played by wives and mothers in the home. This recognition and acknowledgement does not exclude women and mothers from other roles and activities. It is a recognition of the work performed by women in the home. The work is recognised because it has immense benefit for society. This recognition must be construed harmoniously with other articles of the Constitution when a combination of articles fall to be analysed. So, it is not correct to say, as has been stated repeatedly by TDs, senators and the media, that the Constitution states that a woman's place, life and duties are in the home. Instead, the Constitution acknowledges the profoundly important role that women play in the home and guarantees to ensure that no mother should be forced into the labour market by economic necessity again because of the profoundly important role that women and particularly mothers play within the family. Secondly, in relation to Article 41 being archaic, sexist, stereotypical and outdated, census data informs us that women are the predominant stay-at-home parent and that even more mothers would choose to stay at home to look after their children if they had a choice. In light of this, the special protections offered to mothers is not sexist or outdated. Instead, it reflects the reality of their lives, noting that, in fact, even more mothers would choose to stay at home to look after their children if they could financially afford to do so. The reality of the way in which mothers would choose to live their lives reinforces the justification for this provision. Two. 
the government state the constitution needs to be amended to recognise the value of the care and support which family members give to one another. So the claim is that the constitution does not recognise the care provided by anyone other than women and this therefore places an unfair burden on women to provide care. This statement is not correct. In the 2002 Supreme Court case of TD versus TC, it was held that regardless of the fact that the Constitution does not specifically reference the contribution that men make to the family, the Constitution is to be interpreted as a contemporary document and that the duties and obligations of spouses are mutual. It therefore naturally follows that the care provided by both men and women within a family is recognised and acknowledged. 3. The government state the constitution needs to be amended to create an obligation on the state to support care relationships between family members. So the claim is twofold. Firstly, that the constitution needs to be amended to create an obligation on the government to support care and secondly, that this obligation on the state to support care will have a positive impact on those who provide care. These statements are not correct. Firstly, the government had the executive authority to introduce any law it wishes into the houses of the Oireachtas, meaning that if the government wished to introduce laws that would offer carers more rights or resources, it possesses the executive authority to do so without amending the constitution. Secondly, it's important to recognise that the government are seeking to delete the protections offered to mothers, which states that mothers shall not be forced into the labour market due to economic necessity, as opposed to simply extending the protection to both parents, and they are seeking to replace this with a provision that would oblige the state to 1. Strive to support care, and 2. Between family members. So, in relation to the government's obligation to strive to support care, Roderick O'Gorman TD has confirmed that This amendment does not confer a constitutional right to care, nor does the amendment seek to insert an entitlement to a list of specific supports. So, the minister proposing this bill has confirmed that the changes to the constitution will not confer any specific right on any person. In relation to the reference to care being provided between members of a family, Senator Michael McDougall has stated the following. Where is the state's obligation in this? Where is the community's obligation in all of this? Where is the social responsibility for people who have a disability to vindicate their rights? It restricts care to that kind of care that is given by one member of a family to another by reasons of their bonds of loyalty. It does not even commit the state to much. The provision states that it will assist members of a family who provide care to each other. It does not even say that it will assist them. It says it will strive to do so. It is therefore virtually unenforceable in any shape or form. So Senator Michael McDougall, who is the former Thonista and Attorney General, is stating that the care obligations are only between family members with no obligations on either the state or the wider community to provide care and that the obligations on the state are limited to striving to support those care obligations between family members, with Michael McDougall advising that the usage of the word strive makes the provision virtually unenforceable before the courts. Thirdly, regardless of the protections offered to mothers under this provision, the government have failed time and again to vindicate this right. Instead, they have enacted numerous pieces of legislation to incentivise mothers to return to the workforce, thereby disregarding their obligations to vindicate the rights of mothers to remain in the home should they choose to do so. Therefore, even if the proposed amendment placed a positive obligation on the state to support care work, history tells us that the government will disregard any provisions in the constitution at a whim. In my view, the reasons expressed by the government for why the constitution needs to be amended do not hold up to scrutiny. If you agree with my conclusions, the next obvious question you should ask yourself is, what is the real purpose behind this referendum? If you want an in-depth understanding of the background and potential consequences of a yes vote in the CARE referendum, please see the link below, which is a presentation I have been delivering around the country on this topic. Thanks for listening.